Many in this room will recall that we celebrated our anniversary right in this building with a partner's event. I'm known for pointing out that Grant is more than just a community college. It is the community's college. Because I know that our success and the success of our students is due in no small part to our partnerships with other schools, businesses, and the community at large. Today we've gathered business leaders, economic development, and workforce agencies with which we closely collaborate, elected officials, and a cross-section of our students, many of whom are wearing grad shirts and can be easily identified, for an event inspired by RAC's partnership with local industry. In fact, this very building, the Schmidt Training and Technology Center, is at the very core of RAC's dynamic partnerships with industry. From concept to design to the program we offer in this facility, we rely on constant communication with local businesses to ensure that we have a shared understanding of the type of training that local workers will need in order to help their employers, especially manufacturers, grow and be even more successful than they are today. In this effort, we share a commitment to innovation and appreciation of the need to embrace opportunity. And with the Schmidt Training Center as a prime resource, RAC's career and technical training pro programs have evolved from local excellence to national prominence, a point of pride for RAC and our many partners. And thanks to all of you for being here and allowing us to showcase the impact of this kind of education and training on individuals, businesses, bottom line, and in fact, our region's economy. And now I'm delighted to welcome to RAC Dr. Jill Biden, America's Second Lady, as well as Dr. Martha Cantor, Undersecretary for Education, whose responsibilities, and they are many, include uh, oversight of policies, programs, and activities related to post-secondary education as well as adult and career programs. Both are community college professionals, I am proud to add. An educator for three decades, Dr. Jill Bikes has taught English at a community college in Delaware, at a public high school, and at a psychiatric hospital for adolescents. She earned her doctorate in education from the University of Delaware in January 2007, and her dissertation focused on a subject very near and dear to us, maximizing student retention in community colleges. She also has two master's degrees, and I know that she earned both while she was working and raising a family something with which our students can also identify. And even given her busy official duty, she continues to teach at a community college in nearby Virginia, nearby Washington, D.C. While Dr. Biden wears many hats as the second lady of the United States, she continues to speak out about the importance of community college. We are not the best kept secret anymore, thanks in part to Dr. Biden. In the fall of 2010, she hosted the first ever White House Summit of Community Colleges with President Obama, and continues to work on this outreach on behalf of the administration, frequently visiting campuses, meeting with students and faculty, as well as industry representatives, just as she's doing here at RAC today. I think it's safe to say that Dr. Biden and Dr. Cantor get us. They know what we're about. It is even safer to say that we're honored to have both of them visiting our campus today. And it is my great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to ask you to welcome warmly the Second Lady of the United States, Dr. Jill Biden. Thank you, Dr. Blights, for that kind introduction. And it's wonderful to be here at the Reading Area Community College. And it's always great to be back in Pennsylvania. You know, I was a Pennsylvanian. I grew up in uh, North Grove, Pennsylvania. But, uh, and I'm so pleased to be joined by one of our strongest advocates for community colleges, under Secretary of Education, Martha Cannon, my dear friend, a former community college chancellor and president herself. I'm also pleased that Lanita Jacobson, the regional administrator for the Department of Labor, is here with us today. Um, oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> As a community college teacher, I feel right at home. For the last 18 years, I've seen, and I'm sure you have too, the power of community colleges to change.
change lives. I've seen moms juggling jobs and childcare launch themselves into new careers. I've seen workers who go as far as they can in their jobs, get the skills they need to reach the next level in their fields. I've seen recent high school graduates take another step on the road to a four-year degree. And I've seen people in their 40s and 50s who've been out of work for so long that they've nearly given up hope. Now they finally get that second chance. I've seen what happens in community college classrooms, and it's extraordinary. And what's really extraordinary is that we finally recognize that not only can community colleges change lives, they can change America. Quite simply, these schools are absolutely critical to America's future. That's why I'm so proud to be part of an administration that has made community colleges central to its mission of having the best educated, most competitive workforce in the world. Earlier this year, as Dr. White said, I had the opportunity to travel to five states and several community colleges to see some incredible industry partnerships. Partnerships that are working directly to meet the needs of employers in the region. So now I'm really excited to hear what's happening in your region. So thank you very much for inviting me here today. Thank you. Then we're going to hear a little bit about their technical needs and how this school and RAP 
has been able to, to address their goals. And now I'm talking to four employee student or student employee because they've come through different pathways here. And now we're going to talk to them, we're going to get a personal story as to exactly how this has benefited them, either from the incumbent worker moving up upper mobility in the company or student to hire. So from this point, I'm going to turn it over to Scott Hole. Scott Hole is the satellite maintenance manager with East Penn Manufacturing uh, East Penn Manufacturing And Scott, if you could share with us a little bit about the company's technical needs as well as the relationship and the partnership we've built here with the Rapid Technologies. Um, now we have been motivation to work with all of us and be efficient. We're the customer. We've been manufacturing for over three minutes in product technology. For our company, I'm sure we're all about the technology and driven by the team for every area of our health and safety environment and quality. Um, and, and of course, the customers. The, our equipment with David Van Manufacturing is mostly computer controlled and programmable logic and could be performed at the same time. These um, functions can be repeated thousands of times a day and the result is to be um, either achieve the same result each time so each time it's going to happen. Our machine operator today is continuing to have a theory based on fire, adjustment, temperature, pressures, speeds, positioning of the product and the equipment. Um, today we can also monitor the process of product movement, cooking condition, account cycles, um, both products, and collect data. Um, today's maintenance person must be a multi skilled to be able to understand and communicate the equipment to adjust and maintain the structure and repair our equipment. Technology has grown to the point for us that we, we've added the Department of Control Engineers and Control Technicians um, just, just to implement and maintain new technology and work in our process. Um, that, that whole group has grown out of our main staff, which is a straight new technology. Um, that, gives, that, that, that allows us to do some things that we couldn't do before. We can now monitor the conditions for some of our greatest support equipment systems. Um, it's the point now where some of our support equipment can send an email when it's time to um, service it or some type of problem with the computer or the So so Scott, and, and so if I can just uh, if we get a little bit deeper understanding. So can you talk a little bit about the, the relationship that we have with the college and how I mean we're on group 14 with you guys. Um, we have had 14 groups of employees that have come in here. They have we actually have a relationship where we pre-assess. So we don't waste any time. And we will pre-assess those employees, make sure they're not, they're not going to waste uh, at least kind of time and money, and then we actually put them through their custom training programs, which he's kind of had to cherry pick out of those four labs. Can you, can you just talk a little bit about how we do that? Sure. Um, actually, we go back to the college all the way to 1999. Um, John here with the, the, the team of workforce development at that point, met with the art of the industry, and other local manufacturers to find out who are creating these and what we want to um, John spent many days that our company would offer for our employees and our supervisors and what they need to do for their job. Um, the result of that was John built a transfer curriculum for, for us. And they also took that curriculum and added, added that into a curriculum for, for here at the Industrial Maintenance Training. Um, through the process, John asked myself and I'm sure some other people from, from industry to be part of the uh, advisory committee for, for planning. So, um, when the college center opened in 2007, we had 12 more maintenance employees um, go through the, our final training program. We were very pleased with the results, and it was some of our, our better people that turned, that turned along with us. We then worked with Bonnie to, to develop our customized training for different trades, um, and like Bonnie said, we built the assessment portion into that, so we were making sure that we were training our employees for what you need to do about wasting our time or their, their time in their time. Um, the great program we, we developed were, were set up so our employees can do the third part of training at our company. Um, they, sit, they sit down with the our company, look at the theory, um, come into RAP one day a week and work on the skills portion of it and, uh, and, and uh, work with the instructors and the training. Um, so I, I, think, I think the relevance here is the fact that we had a strong relationship with these men and we have we have done now 14 groups uh, and typically the groups hang around 12 to 20 some employees. Um, so so we're 
Carpenter Game Institute for Quantum Technology. Uh, Carpenter has a similar type of relationship from the standpoint of you guys have really customized your training program around your positions at Carpenter. Can you talk a little bit about that and then how we've been beneficial? First, we had a little bit of people directly into our assemblies. I think the criteria to be in order to get hired. It's the one you'll say that's what they're testing. And yet, the big commitment was then having a still big progression, which we would piece notes to the rack that provided us training. So we could just give people the official training uh, to meet our needs to get that man for operating the crash. And uh, we have another section where we, uh, that's the direct buyers. We also look at teaming up with RAC to provide training for apprenticeship programs. So they're able to even go deeper and, and give you more basic training to those people that uh, we may send in here. And we're trying to handle this and get the word out to the local schools and say, hey, you can make a great living out in the industry as a troubleshooter, whether it be mechanical, electrical, and we're trying to develop people getting into that and showing uh, how many good things in here, the, the training they can keep, and uh, we go from there. Because we're all suffering quite frequently in the whole country here. People can take their own training. Just for instance, we have 50 people that are 30 years or more in our main group that partner that can retire. So we're really going to have that people that need to Right, population. Exactly. If we could just have a, a couple of minutes with Dave and Kenneth, and then Dave is with Marathon Care. Marathon Care is high speed. This is high speed manufacturing, high speed packaging. So when we're talking about the high end and how we need to help technicians to, again, wrap the up very quickly with these high tech skills. I mean, Dave's plan and what he does there is yeah, Dr. Bottom, yeah. just just as Bonnie said, we, we are high speed managing operations and then managing very healthcare lines. We we've uh, produced uh, approximately 180 million units that comprise about 12 billion tablets last year. So just to give you a flavor of what goes on in that facility with a lot of really good employees. And and one thing that we're trying to do is to increase the level of skill of the employees because as we generally say there's a lot of people out there that are retiring. Um, in the technical training and the partnership that we've established with fairly very green colleges and funds. It's been a great partnership, it's something that's in our backyard and it's something that we try to take advantage of. It has produced a lot of the training for our, for our, our existing employees to get to establish and create a, a baseline of where they should start with technical skills because uh, one thing that I completely firmly believe is that technical training is an investment in today's economy that will result in a great high rate of return. And, Exactly what the partnership is being done between Fred and Bear and selling and making our employees. It's the investment into America that we need to do. Thanks, Dave. And so we can hear a little bit from Gene Campbell. Gene is with the Hershey Company. He is a plant manager with the Y and S plant, which is west of us in Lancaster County. And, and Hershey has, we've had a very, very strong relationship with Hershey. They endorse our AMI.